Okay, so imagine there are two cities, city A and city B. And that city B is northeast of city A. Exactly 30 kilometers east and 40 kilometers north. And suppose that we want to travel from city A to city B by a plane, but now let's add another piece of information. Let's add interference from again a wind shield. So let's assume that the plane now this time can fly at a speed of 150 kilometers per hour and that the wind is blowing say now at 40 kilometers per hour and it is blowing 70 degrees west of north. Now the question is, so we have the speed of the wind and its direction. So this will give us a complete velocity vector for the wind. All we have is the speed of the plane. So the question is, of course, is in which direction should we aim the plane at? So the net result of the velocity vector of the plane and the interference from the velocity vector of the wind traces a vector that is in the direction perfectly pointing from A to B. So the plane will, as a net result, fly directly in a straight line from city A to city B. Well, the first thing we need, of course, is the direction here of this vector, right? This is our objective vector pointing directly from city A to city B. Let me call this angle for now theta. Well, we can use basic trigonometry to find theta. So let me do it here. So the tangent, right, as we know the opposite side and the adjacent of the angle theta, having here a right triangle, so tan of theta is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So 40 over 30, which is of course 4 thirds. To solve for theta, we take the arc tangent. So theta is exactly the arc tangent of 4 thirds. If we use our calculator, again set in degrees, this will be approximately 53.13 degrees. Let us now also find an angle corresponding to the wind vector. So we know it's 70 degrees west of north, but let's draw the corresponding picture. So let me put it here, or it doesn't really matter. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Yeah, let me put it here. So the direction is 70 degrees west of north. So you have the north direction, and to the west, meaning you're leaning towards the left-hand side, by 70 degrees. So let's draw the horizontal from west to east, and draw the vertical from south to north. And now the wind is blowing 70 degrees west of north, so the angle here is 70 degrees. Well, since we have here a right angle, then the other part will be 20 degrees. And the length of this vector, of course, is the speed of the wind, 40 kilometers per hour. So we have the direction of the wind vector, 
either from the horizontal here, 20 degrees up, or the vertical here, 70 degrees to the left, and the length is 40, and we have the direction of our objective direction. About 53.13 degrees off of or up from the horizontal on the right. Let us now draw the objective vector in the right direction, the wind vector, the velocity vector, again this is the net velocity of the plane, and the initial velocity vector of the plane, we know the length of the vector, 150 kilometers per hour. Again, we're talking here about velocity vectors, but we do not know its direction. That's what we're trying to find out. Let's put the pieces together. Let me draw a slightly larger picture here with the horizontal again. So, whoop. Let's draw a vector in this direction. Again, we don't know the length of this vector. The length of this vector will be the net speed of the plane. We don't know this yet, but we do know its direction. Let me draw it slightly longer to have a large enough picture. The wind vector and of course we want the wind vector or the, the the velocity vector of the wind plus the velocity vector of the plane to give us a velocity vector in the exact direction once we have the direction we can find the length so let me now add to the wind vector velocity vector of the plane. So what do we know? Well again to make the picture more familiar I will use ABC and alpha beta gamma. So let me call this C. Let's call this uh, say A and this B. Opposite angles to each side using the familiar here alpha. Opposite to B beta and opposite to C gamma. So what do we know so far, right? <laughs> so we know uh, the length of A is 40 kilometers per hour. So let me put it here. So A is 40. Again, I'll drop here the units of kilometers per hour. We don't know the length of C. We do know the length of B. This is the velocity vector of the plane. The length is 150. Well, we know this angle here, right? So this is the angle of theta of 53.13 degrees approximately. Let me squeeze that in here. We also know the angle here is 20 degrees. And so we can now find beta, right? The total angle here from the horizontal is 180 degrees. If you subtract 20 and 53.13, you get the value of beta. Again, rounding to the second decimal place, approximately 106.87 degrees. And again, all I did is subtract from the full angle 180, 20 degrees and 53.13 degrees. Now we can use the law of sines. Since we know AB and beta, we can find alpha. So we know by the law of sine that sine of alpha over eight equals the sine of beta over b. And again, as we know a, b, and beta, the only unknown is alpha. So if we solve for sine of alpha, we get a over b sine of beta 
cancel the sign, we take the arc sine of both sides. And so alpha will be arc sine of A over B sine of beta. If we replace by the appropriate value, so A is 40, B is 150, sine of beta, 106.87 degrees. Again, make sure you set up your calculator in degrees. If you punch this in, you'll find an approximate answer of 14.78 degrees. So we can write that in here. Alpha is about 14.78 degrees. We can now obtain the missing angle for free as the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180. We now know alpha and beta. We get gamma for free, right? And here I won't write it down. Gamma is of course 180 minus alpha minus beta. If you do this, you will find that gamma is approximately 58.35 degrees. So now we have all three interior angles of our triangle. We have the length of A and B. The only unknown is the length of C. Well, we can find C, of course, using the law of cosines. So let me just rewrite here the law of cosines. So c squared is a squared plus b squared minus twice of ab cosine of the angle opposite the c, which is of course gamma. Well, we want c, so let's take the square root of both sides and also replace by the appropriate values at the same time. So a squared. 40 squared plus b squared, 150 squared, minus twice of a b cosine of gamma, 58.35 degrees. And don't forget, c is the square root of the expression. Again, if you use your calculator, making sure it is set in degrees, you will find an approximate value of C to be 133.43. Again here, these are the speeds, so they are in kilometers per hour, right? A was the speed of the wind, 40 kilometers per hour. B was the speed of the plane, 150 kilometers per hour. So C, of course, has the same units in kilometers per hour. So now we have everything we need, but there's a little twist, right? So we know that the net result of the wind vector plus the plane's velocity vector, again, sorry, the velocity vector of the wind plus the velocity vector of the plane will give us now a velocity vector pointing perfectly from A to B, so we have the right direction, and the net speed at which the plane will be traveling is approximately 133.43 kilometers per hour. So let's write this down first. So we have the net speed of the plane. approximately 133.43 kilometers per hour. So initially, the speed was able to travel at 150 kilometers per hour, but because of the interference from the wind, it slows it down to 133.43 kilometers per hour. Now we're missing the orientation. 
in which direction do we point the plane at, do we orient it, so that the net result of the velocity vector of the plane with the given orientation and the velocity vector of the wind has the plane travel perfectly from CD A to CD B in a straight line. Well, it's not quite gamma, right? Because gamma is not the angle from the horizontal. So how do we find, if we want the direction of the plane, say from the horizontal? So from the east up to the north. Well, once again, we're going to add in a little bit to our picture by extending the velocity vector of the wind and drawing in a second horizontal. So what does that give us? Well, these two lines are parallel horizontal lines, and so the angle here and the angle here are the same. Both are 20 degrees. But by symmetry, right, these are two lines intersecting one another. Sorry, this line with this line. And so if this angle is 20 degrees, then this angle is also 20 degrees. So the angle that we need here for the orientation of our plane is going to be gamma minus 20 degrees. So let me write this down. So the orientation of the plane or direction, doesn't matter which word you use, we're talking about the direction in which we should point the plane at, the orientation, so that ultimately the net result will be the plane traveling perfectly in a straight line from CD A to B. As we've said, we want this angle here, so we take the full angle gamma and subtract the angle here, which is 20 degrees. So we have gamma minus 20 degrees. Well, gamma was 58.35 degrees, minus 20 degrees, which gives us an approximate angle of 38.35 degrees. And again, in which, from which um, point of reference, well, if we use here the east as the, or if you want here, the east as the baseline, then we have to move up from the east direction, up north, by this many degrees. So we can say, finally, 38.35 degrees north of east. And now we have a complete conclusion. So if we aim the plane approximately 38.35 degrees north of east, so again, starting from the east direction as the baseline and moving this direction up north by 38.35 degrees, this will have as a net result of the velocity vector of the plane with the velocity vector of the wind this will have the plane move perfectly in a straight line from city A to city B at a net speed of approximately 133.43 kilometers per hour. And this is once again an example of how we can use basic trigonometry and geometric vectors to solve these rather interesting navigation problems.